Hi, okay, great. And thank you for um, that detailed information uh, and the introduction. As mentioned, my name is Brian Verbort and I am a solutions engineer for M2 Technologies. I'm uh, excited to be able to show you some of the capabilities in the workflow creation capacity that uh, Vault Professional and Vault Workgroup have. So I'm just launching Vault here. Um, I will mention that at this point the uh, most of the functions and settings and configuration that we'll be doing will require some sort of administrator access. It doesn't mean that you have to be logged in as the administrator in Vault, but your um, account just simply needs to have administrative uh, privileges. Also some of the things that we're going to see here are based upon a default configuration that's actually provided by Autodesk themselves. And so there's some pre-configured things here that are part of your basic installation of the Vault product. So Vault Professional or Vault Workgroup come with these uh, default configurations. The Vault that I'm running is 2020 and is actually bone stock. They're uh, just a fresh installation, nothing pre-done, pre-configured really whatsoever um, in this environment. We'll start out by creating a user that's going to be um, driving through the process of doing change management and so we want to give them the revision capability. So in this case I'll put in the username underneath the user uh, creation node there. That's all. We don't need any more information here. I prefer to manage my users via uh, the group environment. So uh, this particular user will be added to a group that we're about to create here. And he's an engineer so we'll call him at engineer and we're calling the group engineering so that uh, we can have any user that has an engineering function be part of this group and then simply assign the whatever the appropriate um, permissions are or roles are for the particular user in this case uh, we want them to be able to drive change through the change process and so there's a certain level of permissions that are required to do that We'll also assign this particular uh, group of users access to a particular vault. In this case, vaults to call the vault. And that's pretty much it. Um, just closing that dialog box and then let's move into where most of the configuration portion of the this particular presentation is going to be working. In the vault settings, we're going to go in and select the behaviors tab. Here is where we find most of the different things that are going to need to be leveraged or can be leveraged to enable the revision scheme and workflow process related to it. You'll see there are life cycles that the revisions can move through. So as we're going through the release, revision, release process. The, again, these are default configurations that come with the software. We'll be modifying and making adjustments to do those things. I'll just note here that we have a a simple workflow that we're going to be using that has just a basic work in progress and released to just two states to keep it simple. You can also create your own uh, using the new icon there, your own life cycles. So now that life cycles, uh, we kind of see what those are about and what they might be doing. Um, we'll go ahead and move on to taking a look at some of the of the other options that are available to us and the ability to either use existing or to create new uh, schemes for the revision process. So in this case you can see several different revision processes available to us, um, most industry standards, or you can make your own custom ones. We can also configure properties that are going to be associated with these specific documents as they move through the revision process. Properties are something that uh, you're probably already familiar with, but you can create your own user-defined properties or what's known as uh, UDPs or you can use the standard ones that come from the software. So we've got life cycles, uh, properties, and revision schemes. Now how do we tie all this together? Well the category is what actually controls the documents participation in these different life cycles and property uh, change state environments. So if we go into a category, in the category environment, We'll find a default category for engineering. This again is coming from the default deployment of the software for the manufacturing configuration. And so what you'll find is that there is an engineering 
category already defined for use. And it does things like allow us to assign the life cycles and the revision schemes as well as the properties. In this case, I'm going to add a property that might be important for our organization to know more about. So we'll add in cost center in addition to cost. And in the revision schemes, we'll go ahead and assign a different revision scheme. In this case, we'll get rid of the uh, default ones that's set there, and I'll go into the ASME and make that a current so that whatever category is assigned to a document will follow that revision scheme. In addition, we have the life cycles and the different stage gates that will go through the process. In our case, we'll get rid of what's there as the default, and I'll go ahead and assign, as I mentioned, that simple the life cycle state that has just two states associated with it, and that is work in progress and released. So just by way of review, uh, selecting the tabs, then displays the assignments that are made, either accepting the defaults or adding your own. So back here in the behaviors dialog box, we're also going to be talking about what drives this behavior onto a file. So the reality is that a rule can be created. In this case, we've got a rule that's been created, again, part of the default configuration that really identifies or assigns this category to files via their file extension. And in this case, you'll notice that they're being applied to any new documents that might be added to the vault or documents that are created in the vault via like a copy design type of a mechanism. You'll, so you'll notice that the DWG file format, for example, well, that could be an AutoCAD file or an inventor drawing. So all of these document types with these extensions will be checked against and assigned the category based upon this rule. You can create rules for other document types and separate and make different behaviors. For example, um, a less rigorous release mechanism for maybe some of your office documents that might be uh, ne might need control, but not a, quite as rigorous a um, review stage in order to get released. So with those categories associated with the rules and kind of controlling the behaviors with uh, life cycles and properties, as well as the revision states, we'll go ahead and we'll test our work to this point and work through the process of using an inventor document, in this case an inventor assembly, to add files to the vault and work them through the revision process. So the first step here will be go ahead and uh, just logging into the vault. So I'll log in and I'm going to be using the Ed Engineer user that we had just previously created and authenticating myself in the vault with those credentials. The next step then is to uh, just review what we've got here, essentially just noting that all of these documents are new, they're not actually in the vault at this time. Pretty simple process for me to check in to the vault just like you would with Vault Basic and uh, get those files added into the vault so that they then become subject to the management process of the life cycles. So once the documents have been added into the vault here, you'll see that the icons are identifying them as matching what's in the vault. You'll also notice that there is some additional information associated with the documents in the form of the revision. So we have a state being described here and the revision, which is a preliminary revision. These files are set to a revision A. They're not currently released yet, but they've been assigned the properties for the category and the behaviors that we created for the category. And that is a revision scheme starting with A, B, C, D, E, and also um, any of the property information or lifecycle states. So in this case, I can change the state of the top level assembly if I'd like, and that state change may allow us to release the document. However, in this case, you'll notice that I get a message saying that the children, it can't, the assembly can't be released without its required children also being released. So in this situation, uh, and that's a, a, a great reminder that we need to have the, the, child, the child documents also in a released state. So in this case, I'll just use the shift select method and I'll pick the uh, released mechanism. So we are now in the released state, which means that those files are locked against editing. They can't be checked out or modified 
without first going through the process of going of being placed back into work in progress. You see here that there is no I have no ability to then use those editing functions of check out and modify. I'll go through the process now. Um, so once these documents have been added, it might make sense for us to go ahead and release them. Maybe this is an existing design that we just want to introduce revision control on. So being able to, to do that to release a document and then in this case bring it back into the work in progress environment so that edits can be made. I'm drilling down in and of course the work in progress lifecycle state doesn't automatically give us a checkout. So in my attempt to make this edit on the component I need to be explicit about granting the checkout so that I have ownership on it. Edits are made, the checkouts committed, um, the save is then committed to the assembly and you'll see that we now have a provisional revision B that's been added. Now this isn't committed yet because this document hasn't been released. So the revision B and the work in progress state identifies that document as still being able to be checked out, edited, and then checked back in all within the umbrella of the revision B. This, in this situation the assembly itself isn't necessarily aware of or might be confused by the fact that we're now using a revision B subcomponent. It knows that and reflects it in that informational note. Now I could have checked out the assembly and gotten the assembly into a uh, work in progress lifecycle state at the same time I did the component. We're just doing these separate to commit, um, kind of reinforce the concept here. So changing the lifecycle state to work in progress and then checking the document out, in this case proactively, allows the assembly to be modified so that it can reflect or consume essentially the new version, the new revision I should say, of the document that was modified. You'll see that icon in the browser for the assembly is reflecting that edited state as well. Now I'll simply check in the two documents. So just uh, can do it individually or as a group. We can check these documents in and then change their state. In this case we're returning them both back to a released state. So we've got a revision B of the assembly and the component that changed that required the assembly to be revised to Rev B. In this case I'm going to go back into the vault and now I'm taking a look at those documents in their current state. Might be a little bit easier to see here. It's so nice to work in the context of that browser but you'll notice here all the detailed information about the history of the design including the versions and the revisions, what was done, who did it, and when and the fact that those documents were in release states in a previous case. They've been taken back into work in progress and then re-released with the new uh, versions that are associated with the revisions. Total accountability, total traceability, total audit history in the process of making change to documents. And this holds true for uh, obviously not just the assembly but also for the part component. Again, these documents are in a lock state. There's no way to make changes to them without them first being moved out of the released state into work in progress, which then forces a preliminary revision bump to the next available. In this case, I'm also now moving over into the AutoCAD environment. We have the same capabilities built into the AutoCAD environment as we do into an, the Inventor environment. So in this case I'm going to open an existing document that's not yet vaulted. And this particular drawing has a is of an assembly. It's got some isometric views and parts list on it. We're going to be adding this to vault. So you notice the icon has represented it as not being added in. Simply the, the exact same workflow we just used for vault or for inventor. So first of all, I'll check the file into vault. I'll annotate that check-in as being the initial check-in of the design.
you'll see the icon in the browser is representing that that's now a Volta document and the file on disk matches the Volta document exactly. It also has been associated with the category which means that it has a revision A associated with it and lifecycle state. First step here in the process of making change is to take it from a work in progress to a released. So now we're committing this file to a released state. Next thing we want, want to do is at some point in the future is take that back out of the released state into work in progress. And in that case it creates the preliminary revision bump and we can then get access to check the document out. Now in these files uh, we're, you're getting kind of tired of maintaining the 2D isometric views. They're very troublesome and time consuming. So in this case with the bill of materials and the view we have in the drawing we don't really want to burden ourselves with the isometric view. So that will be the change that we're committing. Removing the view. Then I'll go ahead and save the document Notice that it is still work in progress at this point. So it's been checked in, but the it hasn't been re-released as, as the new revision B. So changing the state to released then provides revision control on that document and eliminates the ability to modify the file by using a simple checkout. So that's the configuration associated with the workflow for revision control and release management and how it works in a couple of the different CAD tool environments both directly from within Inventor and also from within the AutoCAD platform. I hope that this was clear and concise and helpful and uh, encourages you to pursue maybe introducing an automated release change management process uh, in your organization that might help facilitate some productivity and also some of the manual procedures that you might have in place for trying to capture, manage and the policies that get put in place in most organizations when trying to manage change. Thanks so much for your attention.